Shamim. Uh, and and I mean, maybe Shamim, you can help us get um, get an idea of, of the situation on on the ground. Obviously, the recruitment uh, business is a, you know is at the forefront of you know how people move. It's at the forefront of when people you know want to leave when they are you know pushed or driven to leave their countries of origin. Often, often more often than not, their first point of contact is a, with a recruitment agent uh, or a sub agent, um, and then. And then from there, that's where the migration journey starts for many. So maybe you can you can help us um, identify some of these, you know, first, you know, hands-on um, drivers that maybe Vivian, the micro-level drivers that maybe Vivian talked about previously. Why do people come to recruitment agencies? Uh, what are the reasons for them to come to recruitment agencies? This is the first part of the question, and maybe the second part of the question: Can we can we think about what are some of the ways to ensure that? Um, you know, migrant migrant workers' rights are protected throughout all stages of the migration journey. And what is the role of the recruitment industry as as such in in that kind of endeavor? Uh, drawing on what David said as well, that probably we will see more dangerous conditions for migrants going forward. How can we think about that as well? Um, so to you, Shamim. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Amade. This is uh, uh, first of all, I would like to. Uh, thank you all for uh, giving me the opportunity and inviting me for this webinar. This is excellent uh, work you are doing. I'm following this since uh, you have started. Uh, this is a wonderful way. Can you hear me? Is it clear to uh, that? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, uh, thanks to all the previous speakers. They have already uh, um, uh, said about the diverse, uh, about the GCM2, what we are talking about. Uh, Regarding the migration, you said that why, uh, how the recruiting agency, the industry is, uh, 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 what is the role of the industry here and what exactly we are doing. You see, a uh, country like us, if I'm talking about Bangladesh, right? So uh, this is a huge number of population we have in our country. So it is quite difficult for us to employ uh, this number of people as uh, uh, overpopulated we are and is a poverty, not sufficient job available. So people are uh, willing to move to the other destination country where for the better living, you know, for the financial, uh, for the financial benefit. So now, uh, when we started, uh, it's, uh, in, a, in our country, we said that uh, started in 1978. Now you see every year, almost uh, 700, Thousand to eight hundred thousand people are joining in the overseas uh, employment, and it, it's a regular about last five years data. If you see, you will find that, and how they contribute to our economy. Uh, this is more than eleven million Bangladeshi migrants are working in one hundred and seventy-one countries. Yearly migration uh, from Bangladesh is around seven to eight million, and overseas employment uh, uh, last year. It was 734,000 in, in 2018, and 2019 it was 700 and 711,000. And you see the remittance. Uh, remittance in 2018 and 19 US dollar 16.4 billion, right? And uh, the GDP is seven percent is contributed by the uh, migrant, and which is six times of the OD of us and 11 times of FDI. So this is a, a picture where the migrants are contributing to our national economy. So this is a huge, huge uh, contribution to our national economy by the migrant workers. So now the uh, recruiting industry is helping these people to get their job abroad. Initially, we have only 50 to 20, uh, 100 recruiting and now we have almost uh, uh, as part of 1,500 uh, recruiting agents in Bangladesh. Uh, uh, they are all member of BARA. Uh, Bangladesh Association of International Recruiting is the only association uh, for the recruiting agency of, uh, is endorsed by the Bangladesh government. And uh, uh, we, uh, uh, this total number uh, we have, now you can see how the uh, recruiting industry has grown in last uh, few decades because of the necessity of the volume of the people are joining in the overseas market. So uh, considering this fact, we are working very hard and recruiting has got a lot of responsibilities to 
to help these uh, 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 people who are for the coming for the foreign employment. You see, uh, they are. What we are talking about that uh, if you talk the how the the employment country uh, is, is 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 a is the biggest challenge for us. And presently, if you see, and our market is mostly in Middle East. And if you see this, about 700,000 people are traveling every year. Out of them, almost 85%, uh, you can say, it's a, a Middle Eastern country are receiving our workers. So uh, this is one area that we need to uh, come uh, from the Middle Eastern side. We need to uh, look for the other uh, countries to employ our workers. So. This industry is helping these people to travel a regular way in regular migration, we call. And this is migration is kind of two types of migration. Our workers is going for the short-term migration. So this is for the employment, like they're for the contractual basis, two years to three years and five years time. So this is a, this is a short-term migration, we said. And uh, these people as contributing a lot to the nation and uh, their employment opportunities, which is not available here, they're looking for the better option. That's why these people are traveling abroad. Now, we talk about the GCM. If you, the drivers too, which is clearly say that uh, the people need to uh, uh, work in their country of origin. But they become uh, the country like Bangladesh and other, uh, uh, we call it GCM, this is called uh, uh, Colombo Process Member States countries. So if you, see all the sending countries and look at their population, like uh, Philippines, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Pakistan, India. If you talk about uh, all these countries, so you see it's a huge number of uh, countries completely depend on the foreign migration. So because of the overpopulation and people need to go abroad. So this is which is a quite challenging for the recruiting agencies, uh, industries to uh, move with these uh, migrant workers and to secure their uh, healthy uh, 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 employment, uh, uh, overseas employment, uh, the, the job side, security and safety, and healthy atmosphere in the job side, which is which is very important to keeping the human rights updated, keeping the uh, other facilities intact. Uh, it is quite challenging for us because you know this uh, in this process we have two countries and involved in it, sending and the destination countries. So. We have a lot of challenges between these two countries. So every country has got a different guideline, different policy guidelines. So this is a very, very uh, tough task uh, for the for the country like us to sending workers in, in, in the destination country with their, to maintaining their law and all. So we need to develop our workers' mental and physical fitness and their uh, technical uh, know-how that the, the job she, he or she is going to obtained over there, she should be trained well so that the employer is getting benefited by uh, her or him, and also he can benefit it. You see the recruiting industry, what they are doing, the, the workers, you have unemployment, you have the unemployment people. So we are helping these people to go abroad to, for a better opportunities. So this way, the, the employment country, the employer also getting a support. It's a win-win situation for both, for the employment country employers and the a uh, uh, country like us that we have overpopulated people and, and we are helping these people to get job over there. So it's, it's a, we are working as a bridge in between us. And what you have said that they, they are not coming to us directly. Uh, there is a middleman issues, there is a, some other way. Well, this is, uh, we are working very hard with the government of our country and our uh, Mr. Expatriate that how we can develop a system so that the, the uh, people are aspirant migrants can join us directly to the recruiters so that they are uh, uh, in the recruitment process, whatever the bottleneck we have, we can reduce those issues. So which, uh, which you know, that's quite challenging task. If uh, 700 to 800,000 people are traveling, joining versus market. So it is not a small task to protect all the workers' uh, uh, rights uh, in the de destination country. So we are working very, very hard on that so that how can we can make it more uh, ethical, more uh, safer, uh, this we need to work and we are working very hard on that. So uh, for this second question, you said that, uh, shall I come later on or you want to hear it from now? 
I mean, maybe maybe just to to follow up on some of the things you said, because I, I've noticed there's a, an interesting kind of, a, I, I'm not going to say contradiction, but I think I'm hearing two different things. On, on the one hand, I'm hearing, you know, in Bangladesh, the situation is as such that there is an overpopulation, there is, you know, there's not enough jobs and all of this. Um, and and then from, from what David was saying, it's not necessarily the poorest of the poor. Maybe can we can we just, you know, dig down into the profile of, of people who come to recruitment agencies. Um, and then I've noticed there is also kind of in the chat, as we, as we were discussing um, a, a question that is really asking about recruitment fees in Bangladesh and the high cost to migrants. Um, and I think these are two issues that are somewhat connected. So if it's not the poorest of the poor, is it the people who are able to, to kind of afford these kinds of recruitment fees? And, and why is this still a problem today? Well, uh, uh, this is one of the very important questions that we have to face everywhere because you see migration, uh, overseas employment cannot be free. Overseas employment that has the expenditure. So in the overseas, we are being a service provider. We, we are living on that and we are earning through this. So we have two challenges. We have to do the social activities as simultaneously we have to survive by ourselves. So what is happening about the migration costs because of there is a, there, there is a way that uh, the way the people are traveling abroad so they need to bear the migration, the overseas employment cost, which is supposed to be borne by the empire. But some of the countries are not, the employers not bearing it. So it is, has to be borne by the employer, uh, employee. So that's why this thing is coming up. And regarding the migration cost, what you have said that compared to the other sending country, our migration is comparatively pretty high. What you have mentioned, I, I believe. So it is, there is a numerous reason and numerous fact on it. So number one, the supply and demand, because uh, we have almost 20, 100,000 people are joining in the job market. Out of that, we have a demand of 700,000 or 800,000. So less than 50%, we can provide job. So that is one thing. Another is the that we talk about the middlemen in both countries, in the destination country and in the uh, receiving end, there is uh, a middleman over there. But considering we, we are, presently we are working on it, how, to reduce the migration costs. So we have requested and uh, proposed to our uh, ministry to develop a database system, we call it a central database system, so that the aspirant migrants can register themselves and online to that system. And whenever the recruiting agency has a demand, they can place those demand to the to the our expertise ministry. So then authority will provide us the data of the workers. Accordingly, we can select those workers. After selecting them, we will send a final list to the government, the, the authority, and the, whatever the financial we call is a placement fees is, 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 uh, is uh, declared and is fixed by our authority. So this money will be come through the bank, which is now, it's, uh, it's all the process is manual. So we have proposed that, that if the system is developed, and if all the transaction can go through the bank, then the migrants will suffer less and the extra money where they are paying in different places, they are not being required to pay that. So we are very much cautious on that and we are working on, uh, on, on the issues and hopefully uh, it, will be, it will be addressed very soon. And already it is working and Baira is working, working on these issues very, very hard. Uh, any other uh, about any other uh, other issues there to thank you thank you shamim for this um, for this intervention and and i see there are already lots of questions for you in the chat um, especially yeah. on recruitment fees and and all of that so we will come back to this um, at a later point